What's up, guys? It's the Faruqi Brothers back with another video. And today for you guys, we're going to be reviewing the Suicide Squad. So if you haven't seen it yet, this is your spoiler warning because we're going to be going right into the movie. So who's going first? I'm going to start with Zion. Like, let's dive right into it. What did you think about the movie? So, you know, obviously going into it through the trails and everything, the expectations were, to be honest, pretty low. Um, I, I personally, I'm not really a big fan of James Gunn's films. Like Guardians 1 was a great film. Guardians 2 I thought was pretty bad. So I went going into this, I thought, okay, it's going to be – I have low expectations. I don't think it's going to be that great. Um, but surprisingly, it wasn't, as, it wasn't as bad as I thought. And it did have some issues, obviously. Like it was too violent, in my opinion, like needlessly violent. Where like I get like, you know, when you start the movie, you want to like start off with a bang and really like make the audience know like, okay, this is a rated R film and it's gonna be violent, but it's like you just get tired of it as the movie goes on. It's like, all right, we get it, it's violent. And then among other issues as well, where it's like you know, it's like needless stuff in the movie where it's like, okay, we get it, it's a rated R film, but it's like it served no purpose. But aside from that, um the highlight of the film for me was definitely the cast of characters. Where um, the main cast, obviously, we know. Spoiler alert for whoever's watching right now. This is if you want to get out, this is it. But obviously, a lot of the characters die from the first scene. So it's like the main cast you follow, which is Peacemaker, Bloodsport, Ratcatcher 2, and Harlequin and um, Polka Dot Man. They're all King Shark. They're all pretty great characters, in my opinion. And um, they really kept you engaged in the film through all the violence and all the action. And um, kept you invested. So I thought that was great because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, if only we could have had some people, some more people back from the old Suicide Squad. But surprisingly, you don't have to worry. They actually did a great job with the new characters and um, they fit, fit pretty well into the film. And I don't have any complaints about any of them. So um, aside from that, I guess story wise, um, I thought it was okay. Obviously, it was nothing like so mind bending. So, like, it's not supposed to be like a deep, mythological like deconstruction story it's just suicide squad you know what they are you know what they're about it's a mission people are gonna die it's gonna be action it's gonna be funny and that's what they're trying to do and that's what they did so kudos to them james gunn style he was complete throughout the film like you know that this is a james gunn film it's like guard think guardians but rated r like if you could do whatever you want with the characters this is it so whether that's your style or not um that's up to you and uh as far as recurring characters, um, surprisingly, I thought that the recurring characters were not as good as the new characters. Like characters like Harley Quinn were like kind of taking a backseat. Like they weren't interesting characters in this film compared to the new characters like Peacemaker, like Bloodsport. I think that Rick Flag was the one highlight character that they brought back from the old movie. Where all right, like they gave him some purpose and they, they made a pretty good character. But aside from that, I thought you know it was it wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't something so, so special where it's like, okay, this is the highest rated movie of Rob Tomatoes, which now I don't think it is for DC, but like, I don't see where that's coming from either. But it wasn't a bad movie. Yeah, I, th I think what your story is is not that different from, I think, a few of us on this panel because um, the trailers weren't that great. Um, I think we all agree on that. And I personally attested that as well. It just weren't interesting and it wasn't gravitating at all. And a lot of us just felt like this movie is going to be either uh, a mess or it's going to be really um a lack of engaging engagement you know so umar i want to know if you kind of agree with that and what were your overall takes in the movie after zion kind of went on his soliloquy yeah i think uh for the most part i agree with zion i think that the performances were pretty good uh i like the one thing i actually liked a lot was the pacing i felt like the pacing was perfect like where when he needed to be a bit slower and like flesh out the characters and let them like talk about their lives and stuff um, I thought he did like a good balancing act um, with, with, in terms of like having crazy action sequences, and then ten minutes later you're you're still fleshing out the characters, and then another action sequence, and then fleshing out the characters and cracking jokes and throughout the whole thing. And so um, I thought the pacing was really good. Um, not gonna lie, the comedy, I'm not I mean, I'm not a fan of like the James Gunn comedy stuff. Like I just didn't I'm not a fan of it. And so um, I think it's all right uh i think for his fans and maybe like just general audiences that will go one and done kind of watch it that are not really invested in like the world of dc or whatever um i do think for them i think it'll be like 
it'll be fine. Like just like Guardians hit with them, I think this was a movie that's gonna hit with them. Uh, and I do think that uh, like Harley Quinn and like the older characters that did come back. I mean, she's done a good job with Harley Quinn. It's a hard role to get wrong. She had a couple scenes where she did um, she did all right. Um, I wasn't a fan of like I don't I don't know like Idris Elba was good like he's such an amazing actor that there's nothing you're going to say about his acting that's bad but it's it's more like like it was too similar to like what they were doing with Deadshot before and so I was like kind of like whatever like kind of like seen it but then there was one plot point that they kind of switched around which made it kind of interesting is like about how his relationship with his daughter and how that connects to Ratcatcher I think her name is and um and then she was really good I thought Cena was John Cena for the most part until the end until like they made him do some things especially with the red flag scenes especially with like the, really they set his peacemaker series up pretty well like i think i think that's like the setup for that was really good so um all in all it was all right um and i think i'm gonna steal what Shaw said in one of his tweets that if you like you know like it goes to show you like the success of this movie goes to show you that uh if you let the directors actually do what they're doing like do what they want the characters um because it'll be so um comprehensive like within what they're trying to do even if it's not everyone's taste uh people are going to enjoy it because it's like cohesive and it's not like, going to look like a mess to everybody and so that's kind of like my takeaways from it yeah i mean what, what you don't want is a movie to become like super average like this is the difference between average and uniquely average because an average film would be something you watch and you just forget because there's so many other movies like it that it's just like whatever. It's just more of the same, which some of the DCEU and a lot of the MCU, they fall into that where, you know, we all know the, the core flavor of the week where you watch it and then it's like whatever, on to the next flavor, right? Because whatever, now that we've seen it, it's nothing too special. The Suicide Squad, um, and it's, it's early because the movie just came out this weekend, but because it's so distinctly a gun film you're always going to remember it in those terms. It's so ultra-violent. It's so gory. It's so uh, um, vulgar that just by default, it's like different than anything else that DC has given, especially when you think about how this is technically in the same universe as Shazam. Then again, what is the universe anyways? But the fact that these polar opposite movies, one is literally for kids in every sense of the world, word in Shazam, and then the Suicide Squad, you would never bring a kid to. So, and they're a part of the same universe. So in that sense, there's a healthiness to the parody but at the same time um the movie itself can get crit critiqued for what it did or didn't do well and that brings me to you samir what did you think about this movie um i basically agree with uh Zian and Umar for the most part i think i think it relied heavily on the r-rated just for uh they wanted it to be really humor they, they want to dive really into the r-rated humor the entire time like non-stop just uh, those those gruesome moments and those you know, just stu just stupid jokes. Um, but overall, I thought it was it, it was just supposed to be like an entertaining film, which it basically was. So uh, I thought it was fine with it. I mean, Smith, you're the one who told me uh, I think it was yesterday after you watched it, and you said that this is like Gun trying to imitate Tarantino. Like, do you still agree with that kind of statement? I do because I thought that the way he shot some of his. Uh, some weird like zooming in uh, camera angles, some weird paste and a lot of gruesome moments. I thought it was uh, trying to be like Tarantino. A little bit. Yeah, I also felt there was there was a bit of a Tarantino inspiration, especially in the ways that like, they were cutting back and forth. Like things happen, then you go back in time. Like, oh, this happened eight minutes ago. Let's uh, that's very Pulp Fiction esque when you do something like that. So I did see that inspiration uh, as well when I was watching. Uh, and now uh, up to my thoughts. And number one, I have my review, written review that's on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm also gonna link in the description for you guys to see if you want to just read my thoughts solo. But um, I, like you guys, was not as interested in the trailers. And also with James Gunn, you know, I'm like with Zion there where Guardians 1, I like a lot. And Guardians 2, I don't like at all. And the difference between two of them is that Guardians 1, someone else was co-writing it with James. And there's some controversy there as well, but I'm not going to get into that right now. But um, Guardians 2 felt like, you know, this is him doing the most he can with Marvel. But we know Marvel has a threshold they won't cross. And something like this you would never see in the MCU. So the fact that um, DC brought him on and Warner Brothers rather, and they said, take any movie you want. And we talked about this multiple times in our on our streams and podcasts before that they literally told James Gunn, take any character. And they were actually pushing him. Toby Emmerich 
in particular was pushing him to take Superman. They're like, direct a Superman movie. That's what we want. In the end, he said, I don't want Superman. Let me do a, another take at Suicide Squad. Um, and then what we got is what we got. And I honestly do think, personally, and we can, I'll ask you guys this afterwards a little bit too, I do think this movie is better than um, the 2016 Suicide Squad or what fans are calling Studio Squad, right? It's better than that movie, in my opinion. Um, now, we all know the air cut is outstanding, so we don't know um, what's going on with that uh, and if it's if it's better or whatever the case might be, but we know every director needs to get their vision out. So that's like another thing, but it's worth pointing out that the 2016 version that everybody has been lamenting uh, in many ways, even the actors have been disowning it. Joel Kinnaman, who played Rick Flagg, said the first 30 minutes are good, but the third act is a mess. And this is the old actor who's pointing out the film is bad. And we all know what David Ayer thought about it. And then Jared Leto's also spoken multiple times about the move, what, what wasn't in that movie. So this movie, by default, is going to be better because it's one man putting his vision on display for the audience and isn't multiple people in suits the same suits who thought that superman um can't destroy his ship because he has to go back to krypton right so we're listening to someone who cares about the character and that's why the suicide squad is better now i agree also with zion on this one i think me and him had a very similar um viewpoint i, I thought it was a little too violent so you call me a boy scout you can call me whatever you want to say but i thought it was a little too much for me and um like, it was taking me out of the movie. Like, it wasn't getting me more invested. It was getting me less invested when, like, we're seeing entrails and skins off people's faces. And uh, it just people with half a body, you know. I was like, I don't know. It, it's not doing it for me. And I'm like, like, I don't know. Like, I could see it in Attack on Titan, but I can't see it on the Suicide Squad. So different uh, uh, mediums can kind of show ultra violence in different ways. But for me, it was just too violent uh, um, in a way that it was off-putting. And I called it in my review and in my tweet, I said it, it's overindulgent. And I'm going to explain that right now because by overindulgent, I mean James took the R rating and just maximized it and said that, oh, if we're going R, let me just go over the top with the violence. Let me go over the top with the language where they're basically F-cursing every other sentence, right? So... I don't know. For some people, that's going to be like, that's what they want. They want that kind of raunchiness. For other people, they're going to be like, I don't know. This is not a kid's movie, number one. So I wouldn't even recommend not, if you have Not to mention, game. they're from the get go, they're strangely violent against animals, especially birds in the movie. But like, yeah, yeah. what is James going to have against birds? Like, why are you so violent against birds? Something's wrong with this guy. Multiple animals were like harmed. I think he did tweet that. He said that he wanted to show how evil these guys are. But like, you had like multiple birds getting burned and like the guy hit the, with the ball, you know, the poke, whatever the name was. Uh, forgot. Yeah, not all those characters like F like F list DC characters. A but, lot of um, a lot of bird. A lot of bird. Yeah, so, and then so yeah, it was weird because you know you don't see animal violence that much on film, even on rated R films. So that did also catch me off guard. Like, all right, this is weird. I think um, the problem I, isn't. I think the yeah. problem isn't that it happened. I think the problem is that it's like unnecessary. Like it doesn't mean anything. Like even if you don't show, like he doesn't have to. The the leader of the. The, the 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 country i forgot what's the country again <laughs> corto maltese yes like the the leader right he's like he we already know he's evil like we literally don't need a scene where he's killing all the birds of the previous guy like it makes no sense so i don't know uh so we can now put transition from that to kind of our favorite character in the movie who we thought was like this is the guy or the girl who did the best job uh in the movie so i guess i'll start with myself because I was I said like Ratcatcher 2 um uh was a, was the heart of the movie for me and like she kind of stood out she was actually the most peaceful of all the characters she was the least violent I think the only time she got ultra violent was when she had to kill Starro um and other than that, she was mostly kind of keeping the peace between the group and kind of serving as the heart. But she kind of went through a lot of trauma and then she showed her father played by uh, Taika Watiti. So that was a little cameo by him. Um but uh, overall, I thought she was probably the one of the standouts. But in terms of acting performance, I mean, you can't go wrong with uh, Viola Davis. You can't go wrong with Margot Robbie. These people know their characters so well that it becomes like a blend. So like when Margot's playing Harley, this is now the third time she's playing her. It's very much like a, a straightforward, like the actor and the character blend, which is very, very rare in these kind of um, this gonna, this is, movies. We're about, to be, we're about to move some furniture around here. Why? So, That's I, right. Yes. I'll let, I'll yeah, let because do it. I like. I get Harley Quinn. Yeah, she is the character. Like you can't see anybody else playing her. She like does an amazing job. But Amanda Wall in this film, and there's no knock against Viola Davis because yeah, her in the role is amazing.
but the way they wrote her character was so bad. Like in the original Suicide Squad, she's like so feared. Like even by like she would even challenge Batman like to his face. But this one, she's like she's really like desperate and like she's not in the right mental space. And like the regular like employees like hit her on the head and like she's acting like weirdly um crazy in this film where like she starts off great like when bloodsport goes to her with like the pen or whatever she's like so calm and she's like a leader she's like in control but then as sick. the movie goes on she becomes like less and less like her i don't know if they changed that in like the writing maybe she was acted differently or not but they made her worse and worse as the movie went on and by the end she was like it's like is this even amanda wallace like so much disrespect to this character I'll agree. The third act of Amanda Waller is pretty bad. I don't know, Samir, did you just catch that? Like, I feel like the first act of Amanda Waller, that's Amanda Waller to me. And that's what I was thinking. I was thinking about the scene where she was like, when he had the knife at her throat, she's like, I'll make a leader out of you. Like, that's like Amanda Waller. But in the end, yeah, if she's getting clotheslined by a, by a random worker, and these workers are all like very generic. Like, I'm mean, watching The Office. Like, what am I watching right now? Like, really kind of like bad actors. Like, no offense. Like, uh, like the acting was probably not as good for those characters. And it just, it was like they're just there for comic relief. Like, it was pretty bad. Like, any scene with them, in my opinion, were the worst scenes of the movie. But I digress. Samir, do you agree with our take that Amanda Waller uh, was not as good in this movie as she was in the original? Or do you think she was better here? No, no, definitely. She was significantly worse than this one. But again, I think that. That whole room that was working with Amanda Waller was like the worst part of the movie, uh, especially that one guy. Uh, I don't know, that one guy was really bad. Specifically, like, like there's always one character that you you hate to see on screen and you keep showing up. He was the guy for this film. You know what's funny? And I was telling this down in the morning. I think those are just the backdoor pilot for the Peacemaker series. Like guaranteed, if Peacemaker needs three like like cheap actors to get on the show those are gonna be the ones who are gonna be with them the whole time right because like that makes sense like they're gonna be his cisco and, and his iris and those, his group of people you know <laughs> like you could do it barry you could do it peacemaker on that point something else didn't make sense because they are working with her and you have to assume they were working with her for years and years why are they suddenly assuming that she's not crazy enough to like kill a kid or chow or how brutal or ruthless she is like they must have been working for her. They know what she's about. They know what she's capable of. So why are they suddenly acting so surprised in this movie? I, I, it didn't make any sense to me for some reason. And the fact that she did not kill them in the end, because we've seen in the first movie, there was a henchman, a henchman, I'm saying, one of the workers was literally like, like uh, just questioned her one time and then she, she shot him in the face. Like, that was, like, that's like Amanda Waller. So I don't even know how they lived. Like, that makes no sense to me, but I don't know. Uh, that It was overall pretty... Uh, uh, I agree, Amanda Waller is pretty bad. I was more talking about the actress. Like, she's a really good actress. I thought um, I like Rick Flagg more in this movie than I liked him in the original. That's my next hot take. So, do you agree with that or not, Rumor? I There's do more agree with that. This one. I do agree with oh, yeah. that, as I have kids crying in the background in my house. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Rick Flagg definitely was way better. And, obviously, we already gave a spoiler alert, right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't like the fact they just killed him. I, I thought it was... But I think it gave John Cena's character a bit like Peacemaker. Now you're not playing around. He's killed Rick Flag. Like that was that was good. And the way they shot that scene, like that was a good scene. The way they shot it. Yeah, you you, you can go mute if you want. Uh, Samir, Rick Flag better in this movie or worse uh, compared to 2016? I think it was better. Um, I know you didn't like to see <laughs> the shard go right through the heart because it's so R-rated. But I thought it was fine. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, Zan, you probably agree with that as well, unless you don't. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think the first movie, he was just your generic army man. And of course, there's more to be seen in the air cut, but just it wasn't as uh, as compelling. I think this one, he felt much more three-dimensional, and he felt like he was like, I don't know, more of a real character. And I think I like that more about him. Um, but yeah, I think we're all mostly in agreement that this was, uh, you know, better than what we expected. Not maybe top echelon of the DCEU, but better than we expected and, you know, not bad. Uh, I think that's where I'm at right now. I think it's like um, a little, I would say above average to good. Like that's where I would kind of place the movie right now. Um, I don't think it was a masterpiece. I think if it was a little less violent, it could have been more palpable. Right now, it's just I don't know. I'm, I'm still letting it, I'm still letting it kind of simmer and hear, feel how um, I want about it. But it's getting better actually since last night and the one night it's been since I watched it. It's a little better. Like I don't know if you guys agree with that, but. Um, I don't know. You want to do your scores, or is there another topic you want to talk about? Like, well, I mean, um, for me, actually, I don't know. I probably almost may agree with you, but though, yeah, Ratcatcher, she was the most compelling character, obviously, in the film, and she has most. Yeah, the, the emotional core was through her character, but 
But for me, the character I enjoyed the most was was actually Peacemaker. Um, I thought his the comedy surrounding his character was the best uh, in the film. And I don't know, I didn't see the twist coming that he was just he was a double agent working for Waller trying to do something else. So I, I actually caught him by surprise. I, I did not see that coming. I thought it was good writing too, but it makes sense that she would give everyone like different objectives. Like maybe she just gave him the hey, if something goes wrong, you make sure this thing gets destroyed. And he's like, I right, bet, you know. Omar, you guys say something? I honestly think that I'm just gonna go with the safer option, which is um like the Harley Quinn character was just it was her. Like she did her thing and that's the safest option. And so I think like from a performance standpoint, she's still She had a good fight scene, yeah. And she yeah, yeah, yeah she's still she one of the best good, actresses. Her performance yeah. was good. I can't lie. Like her, like the scenes that she had with the, with the leader, and also with like, just it's like her whole her. She's a better actor than most of the people that were acting. So I, I don't know how else to really put it. Viola Davis she, again, same points that y'all made. Like she was good, specifically the scene where, um, she's talking to uh, Bloodsport. Am I getting that right? Yeah. So that was that was good. Um, yeah. So I feel like I'm I'm more with the older older kind of cast that was doing their thing. I think I liked what they were doing more. Honestly, Idris Elba was a good actor, but I didn't really care about, like, I don't know. It's just generic, like, the acting. For me, it didn't work. Like, it was whatever. It was, like, very whatever. I think, I think for Jeff, was good. Her acting was good. Yeah, for, for Bloodsport, remember, the Hollywood Reporter reported two years ago that Idris Elba is playing Deadshot in this movie. That was the report. And now they look back, it's very clear. And Samir said this to me also when he watched it. It's so obvious. This was supposed to be that shot. And then the last second, they're like, whoa, we can't be that shot. Change it quick. And then they just started like uh, changing it before shooting. Uh, but this was written to be that shot for sure. And if I think if they got Will Smith, if he was available, maybe he, this would have been just Will Smith's character. And that, that interaction I have with his daughter would have been his daughter literally aging from the last time we met her in 2016's version and now maybe she's more like angry with her father being in prison or he could have been dead shot or shot superman with a kryptonite bullet it's all his like storyline even when he beat peacemaker to the shot and he's like oh i'm using a smaller bullet that's a dead shot line you know so he's dead shot really but because they couldn't use him they kind of reworked it use a different character even idris in, a, in an interview a few weeks ago by mistake called himself dead shot okay so he's dead shot, but but I digress. Um, that's that's kind of uh, the situation. But I remember that. I think, I guess it's for the best because now they can use Will Smith in the future if he was ever interested for Suicide Squad three, which I do think is going to happen. Um, I think they're going to announce that, even though the box office isn't as good um, as it currently stands. Uh, yeah, I think uh, are we out of topics? Do you guys have anything you want to put in? You can jump in if you have anything to say. Otherwise, I'm I'm wrapping this one up. Uh, so what did you guys think about the Suicide Squad? Let us know in the comments below and join the debate from myself, from Zion, from Umar, and from Samir. We're the Faruqi Bros, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.